frequency modulation from 1938. So you're probably asking yourself, what does this thing do? Well, first of all, AM, amplitude modulation, way back when was very common in radio receivers. And in fact, high fidelity AM was a thing. So the way FM sounds today, AM used to sound very close to that. And how they did that was well, really by making the intermediate frequency or the IF section in radio receivers rather wide. So they make the band pass really wide instead of a nice tight band pass. This would allow you to sweep the IF section in radio receivers and tune it properly so you could achieve that high fidelity sound out of your AM radio receiver. Now, of course, just like many AM radio receivers, not all of them are the same. Some radio receivers had an actual tunable IF section, and that's where this device would really shine. And this would be a lot of fun to use, say, you know, in conjunction with an older oscilloscope and do an old time alignment with one of these devices. It should be a lot of fun. And I definitely plan on doing that here in the very near future. I have a scope that would match this device, or at least look very nice beside it and work very well with it. So it should be a lot of fun to actually sweep an older radio's IF section with this device. And I'll show you how the bandpass works and how you basically tune the IF section in an older radio receiver to achieve that high fidelity sound. Many of you have never actually heard what a properly tuned high fidelity AM radio receiver sounds like. So here is an example. This is an actual received station on a restoration that I did quite some time ago. The radio is a Stromberg Carlson 145. And on the face of the radio, it has a variable IF bandwidth control. So just like a volume or a tone control, you could actually vary the IF bandwidth just by tuning a knob. And that's what that little fidelity indicator on the top of the radio would indicate. So here's an actual radio station played on a properly tuned high fidelity AM radio receiver. Basic courtesy in marriage. Yeah. You know, I'm thinking of that either husband or wife, and I'll use the wife because I think it leans that direction most often where she doesn't feel connected any longer emotionally, spiritually, maybe even physically. She's drawn into this conversation. Okay, there's some things I need to do. Maybe it's the husband. So that's what this thing does. It allows you to tune AM radios to sound like that. So if AM sounded like that, way more people would listen to it, wouldn't they? So let's see if we can get this thing apart. So I've never had this apart. So let's experience this together. I notice there's a bunch of screws on the face. I don't know if any of those need to come out or whether it's just as easy as this. I really don't know. Let's see. I didn't think so. So maybe these up here. Let's see. Uh, I don't know. It doesn't go very far. Let's see. I can't see the top not being held by anything. I have to disassemble this whole thing. Yeah, I really don't know how this is held together. We'll find out, I guess. I have a feeling that this is going to be holding maybe the chassis inside or something like that. So They're pretty tricky with the way they used to put these things together way back when. Well, that's a nice long screw. So, is that making anything any easier? I don't know, maybe I'm just loosening up the entire chassis inside. Wow, that is tight. Yeah, I don't know how. Let's see, we got one more down here. I can't see these holding it in. I think it's the whole chassis that I'm loosening off inside. Yeah, it's the whole chassis that I just loosened. So, so let's see. I hope this is all on camera here so you can see this. Yeah, it's coming out. 
at least on the bottom anyways. Now, of course, when I restore this, I'll re-wrinkle coat this, so I'm not really too worried about scraping this up. There we go. And that's that. Doesn't seem like a whole lot in there, does it? So, you know, the cord's all wound up here. I can fit that through the hole so I can get a little bit more extra room here without unwinding the cord. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Almost didn't make it through. So there we go. So I'm really not too concerned about the case because the case itself is just going to get recoated. So I'll re-wrinkle coat this and I'll show you the process of that as well when I go about doing that. So what have we got here? So we've got a 6X5. So this is a vacuum tube right here, which is a rectifier. So a metal 6X5. That's interesting. Installed. It, oh, it's tested in, this is 19, it looks like slash 6 slash 47. Tested in 1947, maybe? Is that 47? Looks like a 4, doesn't it? Maybe a 67? 47? I don't know if that's a stroke or or what's going on there. Could be 67. So 276 tubes, which look like triodes. So these here are two triodes, 76. Sure, a lot of audio guys would like to get their hands on those to make an audio amplifier with. Filter capacitors, power transformer, which looks like it's a little bit scraped up. And yeah, I'm pretty sure that's a four. It looks like it's retested. Yeah, because the newer one says 1950, it looks like. So uh, this here is a, let's see what it is. Yeah, that's 47, all right. 6K7. So the 6K7, for those of you that work on older radios, is basically the same as a 6SK7. So the S basically means that the grid is on one of the pins instead of on the top. So the 6K7 came before the 6SK7. So basically a pentode. And that is a four, yeah. So it looks the same writing as this, so that would be about 1947, this was tested. And we have a 6C5, which I believe is another triode, maybe, if my memory serves me correctly. All that wonderful stuff on the bottom here. So I wonder if we can get under this chassis here without desoldering anything, because they usually didn't make things that easy. So I'm going to probably have to remove the controls on the face. Look at that nice old variable resistor there, wire wound variable. And inside you can see the little, you can see that. It's nice and smooth too. Boy, does that ever feel nice. High quality parts way back when. So what I'm going to have to do is remove some of these knobs here to get inside this thing, because the shaft goes straight through to the face here. So what I'll do is get rid of some of these knobs and see what happens here. Look at this, you're experiencing everything in real time, just the way I am. So this is gonna slide out, look at that. You can kind of get in here now, probably enough to service it. So they give you enough wire length to service things in here. And it looks like they've, somebody that put this together, they put a dot of paint. I don't know if you can see that here, if I can prop this up on something. They put a dot of paint on every single terminal, I guess to say that it was done correctly so everything was double and triple checked. Look at that. That also may have been put on there to see if anybody else services it, right? Because if you're gonna solder that, obviously that paint's gonna burn off, right? All that orange paint everywhere. So this here is a capacitor. 
pyramid cap. What does it say? 450 uh, volts working DC. So you can see that there. So whenever you see that on a cap, so that means volts working DC. So rated to 85 degrees C and that's eight microfarad. A lot of these had a rating for volts surge as well. Surge volts, but this is that's an actual working volts. Have these little caps in here. Sometimes they're a mixture of paper and mica. So since this is a frequency modulator, I imagine most of these are probably going to be mica, but there might be some paper mixes in here and that would be indicated by a leakage test. So if they're paper, they're going to leak, right? The paper has gone acidic by now. Some 100K ohm resistors right here. 10K ohm resistor right here. So this is the, the resistors in these radios are not like modern, you know, the peanut style resistors with the little stripes on them. These go by the bed system, B-E-D. So body and dot, all right? So the body of this resistor is brown, right? So that's number one. End is black, so that's zero. And then yellow is four zeros. So that's 100,000 ohms or 100K ohms. That's how these read. So just at a quick glance, you can tell these, is they're very nice to work with because you know, orange is three zeros, so we have 10K. Yellow is four zeros, so we have 100K. So you can just, at a quick glance, you go, you know, brown, black, orange, right? Brown, black, yellow, right? So that's known as the body and dot system. Same goes for this down here. So the, how this works back in the day also with tolerance, you're probably saying, well, where's a tolerance band? If there is no tolerance indicated, it's usually 20%, all right? Unless it's noted on the resistor itself. So, so some neat resistors up at the top there, right? You can see that in there. More of them up in the top. So some adjustments inside the transformer. Nineteen thirty-eight, right there. So the fourth of February, nineteen thirty-eight, is when that transformer was made. All these neat little components, parts, and pieces here. So this is a coil. If you can see on the top there, see a little coil there. And another VR underneath here. Nice big variable resistors. So most likely some mica caps right here. So this doesn't really look like that much of a restoration, you know, to get this thing working again and get it doing its frequency modulation scheme should be relatively easy, right? So probably some sort of reactance type system in this. So I don't actually have schematics on this. I may have to draw this out or, uh, you know, find a manual or something like that for this particular device. But uh, not a big deal, so not a big deal. So two filter caps here, so four microfarad, 450 working volts is the rating of those caps there. Another coil over here with a mica on it, some micas on the side. So nice looking little chassis, 98%. That's a pretty good tube. So obviously I would end up testing these. Look at this tube here, Royal Canadian Air Force. So way back when a lot of these tubes had pretty special specs on them. And uh, that would obviously be one of them right there. So it looks pretty good. Of course, all the tubes would need to be tested before this is used. It'd be, it's gonna be really interesting to see how this actually looks on a scope. Nice green jewel lamp on the front. That'll look very nice when this is in service. Just classy looking pieces of equipment way back when. You know, they have so much character and using something like this, you know, is, was actually a lot of fun. 
And if you're just getting into electronics now and say you're into solid state stuff, you know what? Honestly, this stuff is so much more fun to use than this new solid state stuff. You know, this is much of a thought process using this kind of stuff, but it, it, it is a lot of fun. It really is just using this and setting it all up and, you know, sweeping something, you know, with just this old equipment. You know, what is this now? 86, maybe coming on 87 years old. You know, think about that. This thing here you know, may even actually work. So when it comes time to restore this, what I'll actually do is plug this in, maybe attach this to a spectrum analyzer, put, some, put a signal in here and see what we get. So maybe we can actually just see if it somewhat works before the restoration. Looks like somebody's added, you know, a quarter inch jack to the top here. So that runs off to this cable, which looks like it may have been installed way back when, right? Because this is very old stuff. This runs in here. And where is it going to? You know, it's actually, well, yeah, it's going to a terminal tie strip inside there. So I don't know what they're doing with this. We'll have to figure this out. The terminal tie strip actually looks factory. So somebody may have just added something to a tie strip here, maybe to, you know, read something or to provide an external signal out or in. We'll have to trace all of that when it actually comes to restoring this device. So this should be a lot of fun. We're going to use this device in conjunction with an older oscilloscope, probably an old wrinkle coated oscilloscope as well and we'll tune some IF sections together and I'll show you how this stuff works. It really is a lot of fun using this older equipment. So now I get the fun of reassembling this until that restoration happens. I hope you enjoyed. Are you interested in learning more about electronics, both modern and antique electronics alike? I teach electronics in a way that's very easy to understand, complete with circuits for you to build, and over 200 videos at this point for you to learn from. I even share my electronic inventions and creations there as well. If you're interested in those, you can find them on this channel or all over the net. So there's lots of stuff for you to learn from. Circuit diagrams and plans and circuit board layouts and component layout maps and all of that stuff is available in my electronics course for the circuitry that I teach you on and the inventions that I release. So you're definitely going to want to check out my ongoing electronics course on Patreon if this sounds interesting to you. It's extremely affordable and I'm there to pass my electronics knowledge on to you. That's why I'm here as well. Definitely check it out. I'll put the link just below the video's description under the show more tab and I'll pin the link at the top of the comment section. So if you click on one of those links, it'll take you right there. If you enjoyed this video, you can let me know by giving me a big thumbs up and hang around. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe and tap the bell symbol if you want to see more great electronics footage. There's lots of stuff coming. I've got lots of repairs and restorations and troubleshooting procedures and teardown videos and all of that stuff on this channel because that's what I'm all about. This channel is all about electronics. All right, until next time, take care. Bye for now.